Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I sure would like to have me a two-bit piece for every time we've rode this way, coming in and out of Dodge. I guess the horses would, too. <laughs> would what? Like a two-bit piece for every trip they've made. They're the ones that do the work, you know. Well, now, Mr. Dillon, you know horses can't spend money. Why, it'd be just pure foolishness to give it to them. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, of course I might, Mr. Dillon. My good gracious, alive. All right. Well, All right, Chester. Yeah, they're giving money to a horse. Why, they ain't nobody would want to give it. I wonder what that fellow's up to. What fellow's that? Over there to the right in that big tree. Well, I declare, Mr. Dillon, it looks like he's stringing up a rope. Yeah, it sure does. That's what he's doing, all right. Stringing a rope. And he's got a noose on him. Yeah. You got a plan for that rope, mister? Well, yes, sir, I do. I got to see that it's measured proper. Why don't you come on down? Well, now... Now, that ain't very polite, mister. Now, you look at here. He's the U.S. Marshal. You better climb down from that tree right now. All right. All right, I'll do that. <clears throat> I've always been a law-abiding man myself. What's your name? Cloyd. Just Cloyd? Just Cloyd. Nobody ever called me nothing else. All right, Cloyd. Suppose you tell me what you're doing with this rope. What? I'm testing and, and measuring and seeing that it's right and proper. What for? Well, for the hanging, Marshal. Oh, you arranging for a hanging? Yes, sir, I am. That doesn't sound very law-abiding to me. I promised her, Marshal, with her lying in her coffin. I, I promised her I'd follow him and hear him speak, and then I'd hang him. Mr. Dillon, he must be crazy. Well, now, some folks say I am. But folks don't know about a man. Who are you waiting here for? Oh, I ain't waiting here, Marshal. He'll be coming along to Dodge, and I'll see him in plenty of time. And then you'll hang him, is that it? Well, not till he speaks the killing, Marshal. I've been following him all over, waiting to hear him speak the killing. A man should say he's guilty before he hangs. Well, I mean, every and all... Never mind, why, Chester. Floyd. Yes, Marshal? Nobody hangs a man but the law. Well, I don't want to cause no trouble. You but... cause any trouble, and I'll put you and your rope in jail. You remember that, huh? I ain't one to forget things, Marshal. That's good. I'm not either. All right, come on, Chester. Marshal? Yeah? I'm right pleased to make your acquaintance. Yeah. Come on, Chester. Let's get out of here. Come on, I, I can show you some new twist to that room. You, you leave it be. Ah, uh, there are lots of ways to wrap the news. Let me see it. Here. Let it go. 
<laughs> Some ropes is made for dragging, ain't they, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> Cal, you pull that away and I'll haul on it like this. Then we'll see how good this rope is. Huh? Yeah. Uh, turn him loose. Huh? I said turn him loose. Well, we ain't doing no hard marshal. Just have a little fun. Try to drag a man's head off. Man goes around wearing a rope with a noose on it all the time. He, he ain't right, Marshal. It's not up to you to judge. Now go on, move along. Yeah, you better do something about that, Marshal. The town's getting spooked at the sighting. I said move along. Well, move. Mm, all right. Oh, thank you, Marshal. Glad I got here in time. He was dragging me for fair. Yeah. This happened to you before? Well, yes, Marshal. Everywhere I go, folks try to pull on the rope. Well, why don't you take it off, then? Well, I've got to wear it, Marshal. I've got to wear it till the hanging. I-, I told you how it was. Yeah, you told me. You'd be safer without that rope. Now, I ain't going to harm nobody, Marshal. Not till the time. You listen to me, Chloe. There isn't going to be a time for you to use that rope. I made it myself, Marshal. And I looped it. Just right. It ain't gonna be used but once. You better be sure it isn't used on you. Sure is a lot quieter in here than it was last night. Yeah. Those cattle drives hit, I sometimes wonder if it's worth it. You make a lot of money off those cowboys. Well, I have to spend most of it putting the place back together again after they go. Well, now, they didn't do so bad last night, Kitty. Seems to me it looks pretty good around here. <laughs> sure it does. After we carted out the broken chairs and took down the mirror they smashed, we're still missing the window. Yeah. <laughs> In this weather, they did you a favor to knock it out. <laughs> you may be right at that. Ah, oh, there he comes, Matt. Who? Oh. Oh. Cloyd. Yep. And his daily round. Good afternoon, Miss Kitty. Marshal. Hello, Cloyd. Cloyd. You and Cloyd have much to say to each other, Kitty? No, Matt. Can't say we do. Sam. He comes in every day just like that and goes up to the bar, but he always speaks very politely. Yeah. Yeah, he's polite, all right. Well, I wish his good manners would make him take that rope off before he comes in here. It gives me the creeps, Matt. That ought to be good for business. I don't care if it is or not. Isn't there some way you can keep him from wearing it? Kitty. I know, I know. There's nothing in the law that says a man can't wear a rope. Mm. Well, my hope whoever he's waiting for comes along so we can stop coming in here and looking around every day. The one drink he buys isn't worth it. See? There he goes on out. He's gonna look someplace else. Bye, Miss Kitty. Marshal. Bye, Clyde. So long, Clyde. Matt, do you think he really is waiting for somebody? He's such a strange little man. Yeah, Kitty. But uh, I don't think he's strange enough. Hmm? What do you mean? I mean, I think that he is waiting for somebody. <laughs> Maybe you'll recall this tuneful reminder of times past. (laughs) This is Dennis James with something else worth remembering. It's this. You're so right. 
to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. See, it's the normal, natural way to youthful regularity. The whole brand content of Kellogg's All Brand supplies your system with all the bulk-forming food that you need every day. There's only one All Brand. It's Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve irregularity from lack of bulk, as millions do, with a bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand each morning. A double L hyphen B R A N. It's Kellogg's All Brand. Huh? Oh, it's you again. Yes, sir. I, I'm glad to see you remember me. Oh, I remember you all right. Well, then I guess you recall I've been asking after a man who might have come in here to your hotel. You've been asking every day. A big fella, tall, straight fella named Creel. That's who I've been yes, looking for. Yes, yes, I remember. Well, then, Mr. Doby, I figured maybe you'd tell me what room he was in. Well, now you listen here. I heard on the street out there that a, a fella like that come in here last night. A lot of folks come to Dodge House. Well, I'd just like to go up them stairs, Mr. Doby, oh, and look around. Oh, here. All I want to do is... Oh. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Doby, but I guess I won't have to trouble you after all. Mr. Creel? I've been... Waiting for you, Mr. Creel. Get out of my way. I always promised her I'd find you. You remember that, Mr. Creel? You just better remember to leave me alone. Oh, I aim to leave you alone right now. Till you say you did it. Oh, you... You'll say you did it, Mr. Creel. One of these days, you'll say it. And I'll be waiting. Like I always Now, am. you get out of my way, or I'm going to break your head open. Gentlemen, please. Now, don't worry, Mr. Doby. There won't be any trouble. I'll get out of the way. You just better. I can wait. The toddy place. Toddy place? Somebody sick? No, not sick, exactly. Martha had twins. <laughs> boys. Well, that makes a whole parcel of toddy boys, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes seven. Funny. Some men just don't seem to deserve having a girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Doc. Yeah? I got something I'd like to ask you about. Good. Fire away. Have you seen much of the Cloyd fellow that's been wandering around town? Oh, yeah, sure, I've seen. Everybody has. He's in and out of every place in town every day. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore? What do you mean? Well, he's found what he's looking for. A man named Creel came into town night before last. Now Cloyd only goes in and out of the places Creel goes. Oh, sticks right with him, does he? Yeah, like a leech. Well, what do you want to ask me? If a man like Cloyd will really make a move, or if he'll just talk about it. Oh, you mean make a move against Creel? Yeah. He says he's going to hang him. You know. He's choosing a hard way of doing things, isn't he? Yeah, that's why I wonder if there'll ever be anything to it. Yeah. Now, he's quiet and polite and hasn't caused any trouble. But he says he's going to, and he wears that blasted rope night and day. He doesn't seem to be in any hurry, does he? Well, he's got a reason for that, too. He says he has to wait until this man Creel admits to whatever he's done. Then he's going to hang him. Mm-hmm. You think he'll ever do anything, Doc? Well, I don't know, Matt. I, I honestly don't know. These kind of things can go either way. Uh, 
I'm still here, Mr. Creel. Following right behind you. I aim to make it real easy to talk to me when you're ready. When you figure you'll be ready, Mr. Creel. Sorry, Mr. Creel, but when you stopped so sudden-like, I, I didn't mean to run into you like that. Afternoon, Marshal. Chester. Hello, Lloyd. It ain't always easy to keep my distance when I don't know where you're going, Mr. Creel. But I'm right here. Right here behind you. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester, I know. <laughs> well, ain't that a mighty unnatural sight now, them two walking all over town, one behind the other, and only one of them doing any talking? Yeah, he talks enough for the two of them. Yeah, sure he does. But if I was that fellow Creel, I'd have to say something. Yeah, that's what Cloyd wants him to do, say something. Mr. Dillon, do you really believe that Cloyd fellow has anything on him like he says he does? I don't know, Chester. I got a feeling we're going to find out. I'll be with you in a minute. All right. And I'm Miss Murray, and I'll let you know when that new boat of clock comes in. I thank you, Mr. Jonas. Good day. Bye, Miss Mart. No. What can I do for you two? We ain't together. Oh? All right, then. Uh, what can I sell you? I can see how you'd think we was together, being so oh, close and all. Oh, you shut all. up. Well, sure, I was just explaining Just that, shut up. Did you come in here to buy anything or not? Not yeah. me, mister. I want some cartridges. I just go where he goes. Uh, well, for, for what gun? This here, 45. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, right back here. There you are. Thanks. <laughs> I guess your friend don't need any cartridges, at least not when he's wearing that rope. He's no friend of mine. Huh? Here I come, Mr. Creel. Right behind you. everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics. So serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice-cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I... Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and stay and be sociable, have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. <laughs> think so. That beats me, Creel. <laughs> well, you played it smart. Good deal. Yeah. He's having a lot of luck today, ain't he? More luck than coming to him the way he's watching that door. Just you let me worry about that door. You are worrying about it too, ain't you? Don't worry. He'll be along, Creel. He always is. Now listen. You want to play poker or you don't? Well, sure. We was just thinking... Maybe you was missing your friend. Well, I ain't missing him. And if you ain't gonna shut up about it, we call the game off right now. All right, we'll shut up, Creel. Go ahead and deal. It's just that I was wondering... Wondering what? Well, I was wondering what you must have done to have that little man following you around all the time. Oh, I ain't done nothing. Go. 
Come on. Uh, come on, sit down. I ain't done a single All touch right. thing here. Ain't no Be out of your joking, mind. man. <coughs> you won't have to watch the door anymore, Creel. Here he comes. Huh? I didn't mean to be so long, Mr. Creel. It was all right with him. Wasn't it, Creel? I told you to shut up. All right. Ain't my mess. But if it was, I'd have handled it by now. I wouldn't have let no crazy man with a rope chase me all over town. He don't have to let me follow him. You hear what he says, Creel? He says you don't have to put up with it. You stay out of it. All you have to do is talk, Mr. Creel, and it'll be all over. All right. All right, I'll talk. I'll talk good. You've been following me around ever since I left Missouri. Now, you ain't going to do it no more. Do you hear me? You ain't going to do it no more. All you got to do, Mr. Creel, is tell me you killed her. Then it'll be over. Oh, I never killed her. Lying there in her coffin, she told me you did. She bo- oh, that's crazy. Now, it may sound crazy to you, but it ain't crazy to me. And it ain't crazy to her, neither. I watched her all the time, Mr. Creel. I... I wasn't big enough and strong enough for her to look at to marry like she did you, Mr. Creel, but I watched her oh, all sure, the time. you watched her. I seen That's you come home drunk you. lots of times, and I, and I seen her run from you, too, not just once. Well, I seen her that. run and hide, and I heard her you cry. You don't know nothing what went on between yes, us. Yes, I do, Mr. Creel. Oh. I know I wasn't good enough for her to marry, but I watched over her just the same, and I know you killed her just like you oh, done it with a gun. Oh, now will you shut up? I wasn't I never good enough. Nobody. I wasn't good enough for her to marry, but I was the one she spoke to from her coffin. Will you hear that? I was the one she told to follow you until you spoke about it, until you told out how you killed her until just I as much as shooting her. And you're following me around just to hear me say that? That's right. <laughs> all right, then. All right, if that's what it is. I killed her. All right, now you just take your rope and you go. The rope is going right there below you, Mr. Just, Creel. Put your hang off me. Go on. Get that rope on. Rope ain't never coming. Get that rope. Somebody help me get this rope off of me. Get oh. Yeah. And you just lay there. Right down there where I put you. You ain't had no call following me around all over the country. Wearing a rope like you was sent from the devil. It ain't never been none of your business what I done to her. I aim to fix it so you don't do no more talking about it. I don't think you need to worry, Creel. I think he's dying. Now, you better get out of here before the marshal comes. I ain't feared. Nobody gonna take me. I'm through with listening. All right, hold it, Creel. You ain't taking me, marshal. Dead, Marshal. Yeah. Somebody got Chester with him. Yeah, sure, Marshal. I'll get him. Marshal. Yeah, Claude. But you. You bring me my, my rope. Here, Marshal. It's here, Claude. That, that's good. I ain't never going to use it, Marshal. Uh, you won't have to. Creel's dead. Yeah. But I'd like to have it with me, Marshal. All right. It's a good rope, Marshal. It's a true rope. It made him speak his guilt. A man should speak his guilt, Marshal. Yeah. If he's guilty. He was guilty, Marshal. Just like he'd used a gun. Just like he used it on me. It, you, you see that I, I, I have a rope. Marshal. Yeah. You'll have the rope. (laughs) 
Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, Martha Robinson, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Waltz inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.